Hey, this is Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping, and I am so excited to bring you the latest and greatest update to my most popular video on YouTube, How to Record Daily Sales in QuickBooks Online. That's right, I am updating my tutorial on how to record daily sales in QuickBooks Online. And I'm very excited because after um, working with so many business owners and showing them how to use daily sales and how to customize daily sales, I have found even more um, efficient, more effective ways of um, using the daily sales method. Before I dive into the tutorial, I will warn you, this is about a 15 minute video. Um, usually my videos are shorter, but in order to do this tutorial justice and really show you everything, it is about a 15 minute video, but it's packed full of information. So I hope you enjoy it. So let's dive into the tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. Any business that does not invoice customers directly from QuickBooks Online should generally be using the daily sales method for recording sales into QuickBooks. We most of the time will see businesses such as retailers, restaurants, medical offices, salons and spas, online sellers, and even some e-commerce businesses that uh, should be using the daily sales method. Here's an infographic showing the difference between daily sales versus invoices and sales receipts. With the daily sales method, you are entering one sales receipt for all of the day's sales, whereas with the uh, invoices and sales receipts, you enter one invoice or sales receipt for every sale made. Now let's talk about setting up your QBO daily sales. First, you'll need to set up the accounts in the chart of accounts. I've given you a listing here of some of the most common accounts that you will be using. If you notice, you'll see the account name, the account type, and the detail type so that you can set them up in the chart of accounts easily. Notice also that we're setting up accounts such as cash, your bank account, a clearing account called daily sales, your merchant accounts like Visa, MasterCard, uh, sales tax payable, tips payable, etc. So make sure that you get this all set up in your chart of accounts first before you do any additional setup. Here's an example of how to add an account in the chart of accounts. After you add the accounts to the chart of accounts, the next thing you will do is to add the items to the products and services list. I've given you a list here of all of the items that you need to set up. Again, you might have additional items for your specific business. You'll have items set up under the names. I've listed all of those under the name, the sales description, and the income account. And if you'll notice that for the sales description, I included pluses or minuses. And that's just to help you for when you're entering those amounts in the sales receipt. It's just a way to help you so you'll know whether you're entering an amount that's positive or negative. More details on that later. Here's an example of how to set up an item in the products and services list. And if you'll notice that I mark the item as a sub item of daily sales. And also at the bottom right, notice that you should make sure that you enter the correct account under the income account. Here's a tip. You can set up a bundle in the products and services list. Make sure that you uh, check on the box so that all of the bundle components will display in the sales receipt. And then add all of the items that you set up for sales receipt it, into the bundle. You can also click and drag the, the uh, items so that they'll be in the order that you want them to be listed in. And more details on that later, but this is a great time saver so that you don't have to re-enter all of the items into your sales receipt. Now that we have everything set up, let's go and take a look at entering daily sales in QuickBooks Online. 
open a sales receipt from the plus sign, then select sales receipt, enter a customer name called daily sales, enter the date of the sale, enter the payment method called daily sales, select daily sales in the deposit to drop down, and then from the products and services drop down, select daily sales bundle. Now I've tried to make everything very easy for you, and that's why I call nearly everything daily sales, just to simplify things for you. Remember earlier when I showed you how to enter the daily sales bundle from the products and services list? This is so that you would be able to save time when you enter your daily sales entry in your sales receipt. So as I said before, you would select the daily sales bundle from the products and services dropdown. When you do that, then all of the items that were set up in that bundle will be automatically populated by QBO into the sales receipt and saving you a lot of time. Now you'll get ready to enter amounts into the sales receipt. You'll need to run a report from your point of sale system with the day's totals and enter the amounts as indicated. Number one, for this line, you will not enter anything. This is just the daily sales bundle line item. Number two, enter total sales income from your daily sales report. Number three, enter the sales tax from your daily sales report. Number four, enter the tips payable from your point of sale system. Number five, Enter gift card sold, either as a positive number or a negative number, depending on whether the cards have been sold or redeemed. And in many point of sale systems, the amount of the gift card sold and redeemed is shown as a net amount. Number six, enter the amount of cash received. This will be a negative number. Number seven, enter each check received separately including the check number and the name of the customer. You will enter these as negative numbers. If you have two checks or three checks, then you will have two or three line items. So again, enter each check separately in a separate line item. Number eight, enter the amount received from Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and Amex, and enter this as a negative number. Number nine, enter any small over and short differences. Keep in mind that the total amount of the sales receipt must equal zero. Save and close when done. Again, as a reminder, the total amount of the sales receipt must equal zero. Now let's talk about customizing your daily sales entries in QuickBooks Online. I'm presenting you with basic examples in this tutorial, but you may still need to do some customization. In order to customize things, you may need to customize the chart of accounts and the items in the products and services list, as well as other QuickBooks online settings. For example, I'm assuming that you receive one payment for Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and Amex per day. But it is possible that you receive a payment from Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and a separate payment from Amex. If that's the case, then enter these amounts separately. You may also have multiple locations, which would require entering separate sales receipts for each location. And you may also have additional types of payments or different payment processors, such as Square. You may also have um, other adjustments such as returns and refunds. Now let's go on to our next step, which is recording and reconciling amounts received. We need to tell QuickBooks when we receive the funds that we have entered so far. It may be cash, checks, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, Amex. This is an important step that you need to complete, and that's because we want to be able to match up the amounts received to what is being shown on your bank statement. Now let's talk about recording cash deposits. In this tutorial, I have assumed that cash is collected from customers, but not yet deposited in your bank account. And therefore, I have used an account called cash on hand. 
Cash on hand is cash received but not yet deposited in the bank. As you can see from this screenshot, this is an image from the bank register for the cash on hand account. And you can see the $400 that we added from the daily sales entry. When you deposit the cash in the bank, you will enter a transfer in QuickBooks. So go to the plus sign, select transfer, and you will enter this transfer from cash on hand to your bank account. So essentially, we're telling QuickBooks that we're moving the money from cash on hand and putting it into the bank account. In the bank feed, you will match the amount deposited to the transfer entered. Next, let's talk about recording a deposit for checks received. From the plus sign, select Bank Deposit. Check the boxes next to the checks being deposited at the bank and make sure that the total amount of the deposit equals to the amount being deposited at the bank and then save and close when done. Now we're going to go over the clearing account method for recording a deposit for funds received from your merchant service. Amounts received from your merchant service, such as Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and Amex, usually are received uh, within two days after the sale. Some merchants group their sales uh, over a weekend. From the bank feeds, uh, going to the left navigation bar and selecting banking, find the amount received from your merchant service. Change the account category to Visa, MasterCard, Amex Clearing, and click Add. Here's a screenshot of the Visa, MasterCard, Amex Clearing account register. You can see the amount being added from the sales receipt. It's in the Increase column. And you can also see the amount being subtracted by the deposit added from the bank feed. That's in the decrease column. As a best practice, the Visa MasterCard Amex clearing account should be reconciled to ensure that amounts are properly clearing out of this account. This is a very important step of your monthly bookkeeping process. Many of you have asked me about how to account for tips payable. Tips are recorded to a tips payable account via the sales receipt I showed you earlier in the tutorial. Tips paid to employees via payroll should be mapped to this account. Tips paid via cash to employees should also be recorded to this account. The tips liability account should be reviewed and reconciled to ensure that tips are properly clearing out of this account. There are many more ways to account for tips. I will cover this in a future video. And finally, let's talk about the gift card liability. Gift cards sold and redeemed are recorded to a gift card liability account via the sales receipt, as I showed you in this tutorial. You should monitor this account and, if possible, reconcile it to your point of sale system, assuming that your point of sale system tracks your, your gift card liability. So what do you think of the tutorial? Let me know in the comments if you're using this method or something like it, or maybe even journal entries. I'd love to hear and uh, find out about what you're doing. Make sure to check the description box below for all of my free goodies and how you can join my free Facebook community. If this content is helping you, make sure that you comment, like, share, and subscribe to my channel so you can get all of my latest videos. I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping.